This is Rich Swingle with IFA Media, and I'm here with three of the stars of Running the Bases, a movie that's coming to theaters this Friday, 1,100 screens across America. And this is a, a film you need to be praying about. This is Gary Nation and Anita Cordell and Cameron Arnett. And I'm going to let them talk about the roles that they play in this amazing film. But who wants to tell us a little bit about the plot? Ladies first. <laughs> Okay, so the plot is basically a small town coach who gets this great opportunity to move his family to a bigger city. And the plot is about his choices on how to stand up for his faith and putting being put into situations to where that he's going to have to make some choices on how to do that. So the story is really about this character who we watch become um, transformed by some of the choices that he makes and we walk along with him through that. Fantastic. I'm just going to take it back because we have been following on IFA uh, the story of Coach Joe Kennedy who would kneel at the 50-yard line, did it for eight years until the principal fired him for it and the Supreme Court said, no, you can't do that. That is your constitutional right to express your Christianity uh, in when you're a public school teacher. And so this film I was asking earlier, w was this based on Joe Kennedy's story? No, this was in a totally separate stream. It's about six years, six, seven years ago, they started writing this. And it, it, that's about when Joe Kennedy, I think, got started getting in trouble. And so they, they were in completely different streams. Now get this, the Supreme Court abolishes Roe v. Wade. And then a week later, the Supreme Court says to Joe Kennedy, you can kneel at the 50-yard line. So now last Friday, Life Mark comes out, and now a Friday later, Ready the Bases comes out about religious freedom. So I'm just, I'm in awe of God's timing, of the way he's going to use this film. So tell us a little bit about your characters and how they plug into the story. I'll go. Just a little bit more about the story yeah, on please. that. Uh, there's so much in the backstory, first of all, that built, that leads to an understanding of why that the lead character does what he does. Because there's a demonstration that he makes, but it all has a meaning that goes back to him. It's not just something he's doing in order to make a, 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 a splash or a play. It's something that comes out of his life experience. Yeah. And when the conflict arises, one of the interesting things about this film and the way it's written there, it doesn't deal with it in a political way, doesn't deal with it in a judicial way. You know, it's not about a court battle. Matter of fact, there is no court battle. The character decides, hey, we're not going to court. Uh, so I hope I'm not giving away any spoilers on that. But I mean, there's a, that's a, there's a, a, a crucial point in there. But it's, it's, all of this is about coming to grips not with what the society is trying to pressure us to do and not do. But what is our response to the pressures of society? Beautiful. And that's really uh, the, the core, where the core of the theme, uh, the theme of this film is. Now the character that I play, I play uh, uh, a gentleman in the town, in the big school district where this small town coach is brought to. And I am a backer of the baseball team. I'm, uh, my character is basically just a, a, a Texas old country boy who somewhere probably <laughs> got rich with oil or something. And, uh, but I'm still at plain folks, but uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a backer of the, of the team and of the coach, and I, I feel like he's, he's somebody who ought to be here. And so that's the, that's the character that I play. Name's Ted. And... Uh, just a, a little illustration of this. My characteristic wardrobe is a big old 10 gallon Stetson hat. Nice. All right? Mm -hmm. And that's, I'm, I'm wearing that in all but two scenes <laughs> of, this, of this film. And uh, so when we were uncrating this hat and the first day there in wardrobe and makeup, and we're, we're bringing this out, this is a big old hat box you know we opened it up and but it had been written by the wardrobe person hero hat just as a mark of who, <laughs> what this is and that. and so one of the persons in wardrobe said well are you the hero and i said no 
I'm the guy who gets to tell the hero that he's the hero. Oh. That's my part. That's nice. my role. Yeah. Nice. I love nice. that. Nice. I love that. Nice. Now, before Cameron Arnett speaks, I have to tell you that you've already been praying for him. If any of you read the article that my bride Joyce did on the Christ Over Career National Kickoff, that was all from Cameron Arnett. So tell us about your character. Well, I play the character of Sam, and Sam is, again, like uh, Gary. He's a, somebody in the town, and he's one of the backers as well. And, you know, it's really something strange that's happening in my life. I, I get to play these characters. There's always the, a twist within the movie stream of what's going on, and, and Sam is very quirky, very crazy, very funny, but we start to find out certain things about him as the movie goes on. But one of the things that, you know, piggybacking on what Gary said is that the, the, the movie has such a great message in understanding that it's really the absence of the saints that uh, need to really shine for God, that allows certain things to be to happen. And when you talked about, you know, the coach, um, you see God's orchestration. And when this happened, even with Life Mark, you start to see the orchestration of how God ahead of time prophetically begins to move his people to what he's actually going to do six years later. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's why the saints have to get involved because now we have to be the backers, the moviegoers have to be the backers of letting Hollywood know yeah. that this is what we want, this is who we are, this is part of our ability now to make a stand for what Christ is doing because God, he let us know that without us really recognizing it six years ago and putting these stories together. And so now we ought to have a clue that we can get and jump on board of what he's doing and be a, a reason why the world knows. Love that. Yeah, go for it. Okay, and I play Diane Brooks. She is the mother of the the lead role, Luke Brooks. And I appear in the beginning of the movie where I start, where, where my role shares some of the backstory as to what leads up to some of Luke's decisions in the end. And so I am Diane Brooks, a.k.a. Mama D. Don't <laughs> mess with me. And I've got a little sass in my character, and I love it. But that's that's my role. She's very full of God and purpose and, and just wanting to pour that into the people that she's around. So Let me, let me say something on that, too. I think what's important about uh, the character that you play, too, is that we find out through her and her speaking to him the don't give up spirit. Mm. Don't let don't don't let God give you all this gift, all this talent, all this purpose, all this plan, and you give up on it because of whatever circumstance may be happening in your life. It's and I, it's a very powerful mm. scene. And so if it wasn't for his mother, if it wasn't for the mothers, if it wasn't for someone in your life that was able to mentor you and making sure that in spite of all the odds, that God is still going to be with you as long as you don't leave God. Mm -hmm. That's part of the message I think that people need to take away. And no matter who you are and what you're doing, God has put something inside of you. And nobody can do it like that. Nobody can be that but you. But if you give up on it, then the world is waiting for someone else to do what you were supposed to do. Well, and also, too, about the giving up. A lot of times we, as Christ followers, get stuck in the fear of it. What is going to... Um, what is out there we may know in our hearts, but being too afraid to actually walk it out. Mm -hmm. And so this this story also, too, has, you know, they're facing some t difficult things. And it, those difficult things may have an element that's going to cause some fear or or intimidation or anxiety. But how do we respond to that? And how do we go about our purpose, you know, despite how our our you know, fear is, is manifested, we still have to, have to get forth. So, um, it's been a great journey and we are all so very happy. One of the things I want to mention a little bit about the, uh, in, uh, the text of the, of the, of the film and where it goes, one who is an important cast member who's not here with us is Todd Terry, mm -hmm. who will be at the, he'll be here at content, uh, later on, but, uh, he's not here with us today, but he'll be, he plays the antagonist mm. in in this uh, effort. And one of the th things about this, and sometimes Christian films are guilty of drawing caricatures of uh, anti-Christian people. And Todd's character is anti-Christian, but it's not a caricature. Mm. 
we we're, we're brought in and we're we're brought in to understand there's a reason why he has come to this place spiritually mm -hmm. in his life there are reasons why he has this bitterness this there are reasons why what coach brooks does is offensive to him mm -hmm. and we can understand that and we can appreciate that because it treads on his turf mm -hmm. and uh so it's not just all about a reactionary thing against the bad guy mm -hmm. but there pe people are people and they have uh things that they're going through and hurts that they've experienced mm -hmm. and questions that they've never had answers to mm -hmm. and so that's part of the mix also so uh one of the things i've, I've really been impressed with the nature of how this by the way the script won several awards mm -hmm. even in secular film festivals Praise God. despite the fact that uh producers and investors kept coming back to the uh to the filmmakers and saying hey we'll we'll fund this if you just kind of leave out the jesus stuff <laughs> but if you leave out the jesus stuff there, there won't be the shell of a story yeah yeah and, and it'd, it'd be just any old story that you could make about somebody having a conflict over their job that's not what this is uh, it's a, and it really is about making a stand, but the script is, is uh, an excellent script. The characters, even the even the characters, only show up a little bit, are are well drawn, mm. and the actors. We we got to see the the film at the at a uh, cast and crew premiere mm -hmm. Monday evening, and the actors just really brought something special to each role and it, it, was, it was it's a special thing and it's one of those things that makes me proud to be involved in christian film Come on. praise god praise god and here again we had the story with life mark where no one wanted to touch the film because it had the pro-life message so they had to go to fathom events and so here we have another story where secularists wanted to get involved but didn't want to uh, wouldn't do it unless they pulled the lord out of it and so God made a way. God made a way for them to get this into 1,100 theaters. Yeah. So, Anita, do you feel comfortable telling your story of what happened when you reached out to media in Kansas City? Yeah, I, you know, I have a, a press release and sent it out to pretty we much. Have another character. <laughs> 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 well, we have a little, little fly here. Um, yeah, so I. I, myself, as well as a friend of mine, we submitted a press release to as many different press um, avenues as we could in, in Kansas City. And, you know, wanting, wanting the press to capture a story of a local resident hits the big screens or just something of that nature. And I had a few phone calls and um, there was initially obviously some excitement in the beginning of my phone calls. And then when I directed them to the website, which is running the bases movie.com. <laughs> um, and then when I just, I could, I could feel the difference in their tone of voice when I mentioned that it was a Christian film and not to say that they're all against that per se, but I have not had one any kind of news outlet or anything want to reach out to me for any kind of press and not to say that that you know won't happen or what have you but that's been my experience with this it's been probably a battle for all of us to um you know to get that momentum going and to climb up and so it's it's a small little um experience i'm sure that mirrors what our producers and directors have exper been experiencing mm -hmm. for six years, right. right? And this is just a one small example of what they have been experiencing with when it came to funding and when it came to other producers who are wanting to take Jesus out and when it, you know, um, other people have, have wanted to take it on, but they had to change all the characters and what have you. And just all of those, those decisions that they've been faced with, um, but yet they stuck the course. They stayed on the path. They did not falter. They, they kept on and didn't give up. And so how that mirrors this story is beautiful. Mm, wonderful. You know, I think one of the things that, that happens for me is that I realized that when God brought my wife and I back into this whole 
Christian filmmaking thing. You know, we, we were in Hollywood doing the secular thing, blah, blah, and all that uh, uh, kind of dissipated and, and, and left, died. Um, but we realized that this is something that God is doing. Mm -hmm. God is overtaking the airwaves. Yes. And so regardless of what secular people want or do not want, regardless of what people do or don't do, I think what, what I see is that I'm watching God do it anyway. And it's almost kind of like a, a Janice and Jambres kind of a thing back in the Old Testament. At the point in time of everything that you can do that you can try to stop, there gets a point in time where the finger of God shows up. And it shows that it's God himself showing himself strong, getting it done, and for his people just to jump on board with him and don't look at all at what you see in the world because he's doing it and they can't stop it. And I think as we give ourselves to that, we'll just be happy going along with him because, I mean, none of us can really explain how all of this has happened for us and how wonderful it's been and how many doors have opened. And in spite of all of what we see, people don't want to do, but it's happening anyway. So it's with the producers, it's with the directors, it's with the actors. And we're just kind of riding it along with God. And so uh, we, we pray that, you know, all the audience and all the churches get involved because it's really just something that God is doing. When I was uh, flying back from Atlanta from the premiere of Running the Bases, what, what went through my mind, was going through my mind and is still uh, echoing my mind, was an old song that I learned years and years ago from Terry Talbot. The second, it's a, basically a conversation between a believer and the Lord. And the second stanza, the Lord is speaking and said, Jesus said, you're made like me, so go forth and create. Don't be conformed to this world and do not imitate their ways and styles that compromise. My message you impart. Go out and be separate and set the higher mark. And the world will always hate you, just as it hated me. And if I'm present in your singing, your song they won't receive. But the poor and the afflicted shall hear and shall be healed. For the walls of all injustice fall when I am revealed. I have overcome the world. I'm stronger than all sin. There is power in my name as I died to live again. I have put an end to death. It is finished. It is done. I am the way, the truth, the life, and I have overcome. And that's why he's Gary Damn. Nation. <laughs> wow. Wow, Gary. That's fantastic. Fantastic. Would each of you take a moment to just pray over this film, over how the society receives it, that the doors would open, however you want to pray? Well, Father, we do worship you. We thank you that you have called us, that you have anointed us, Lord God, that you've shown us, Lord God, in our hearts and our minds what you're doing, who you are. And so, Father God, even those who are against your word, who don't want to get involved, who don't want it to shine, who don't want it to come out, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die for them as well. You resurrected for them as well. So we pray, Father God, first of all, that you would deliver them from themselves, Father God, that you would use not only this film, Running the Bases, Lord God, in their lives, but, Father God, that you would use all the Christian films, all the entertainment, that, all the, the, the writers and directors, all the producers, Lord God, that you have in your hand to set the captives free. And, Father God, we love them, we bless them, and we thank you, Lord God, for the prosperity of Running the Bases. We thank you, Lord God, for the prosperity of the actors. We thank you, Lord God, for the directors and for the producers for just exalting them even as they continue to exalt your name we are grateful for your presence and we thank you in advance for what you've already done in jesus name dear heavenly father you said in your word in the beginning god created and god you created all of us and with a strong message through us, God. And I'm praying, Lord, for the film producers and the directors that are out there, not just not just um, Up To You Films and the Running the Bases crew, um, but I'm praying for all of those people who you are rising up and putting seeds into them, God. I see the ground rumbling, Lord Jesus, with the seeds that you are planting out there in the hearts and lives of those who want to create for you. So I'm praying, God, that you would just fill them, God, with purpose, fill them, God, with hope, fill them, God, with vision, Lord God, so that when they begin to create, they would have your mind and your heart and your focus and your ending, God. I thank you, Lord, that you have created, you are the first to create, and that you will teach us how to create so that the hearts and lives um, will be changed when they see us. Uh, the creation through us, your people. Father, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you are doing through this movie. 
And I thank you, Lord, that the running the bases will not just be um, a message that will end in the screen, but help everyone who sees it will run to you Amen. in the name of Jesus. Father, we want to see the reality of God. Mm. And we want to see your church seeing the reality of God. That the world may see through us the reality of God. Would you raise us up? Would you fill us with, with, with what we don't have? Mm. Will you change us, Lord, to be in your image instead of the image of the world that is so easy to fall into when we do it unconsciously. Revive your church, Lord. Amen. And if you would use this film to do it, then glorify your name. And if you are not going to use it, then Lord, put it away. But I believe that you have ordained to use this film. I believe that you have ordained to use it to inspire, to raise up, to show many something that's lacking and to fortify the hearts of many who have been struggling and to renew the hope and purpose of many who have floundered mm. but are ready to be brought back. Thank you. Mm. Show us thy will, O Lord, and teach us thy path. Guide us in thy ways and lead us, for you are our God, and on you do we call all the day. Call Hayom. Father, in Jesus' name, empower your church and make us like you. Amen. Amen. Lord, I'm, I'm just in awe of the timing of this, for such a time as this, that this movie would come out, Lord God, on the heels of Coach Kennedy being uh, told, yes, you can represent me, you can represent me, the Lord, on the field, that you would, would have this film ready to go to encourage people, Father, to express their faith boldly, Lord God, because if we do not do it now, we will not be able to express our faith at all in 10 years. So, Lord, we pray you'd raise us up to speak loudly and boldly and in truth your, your word, your gospel, that we would not be ashamed of what you did for us on the cross. And I just thank you, Father, for these humble uh, stars, Lord God. Um, one of them said, oh, I'm not a star, but they are all shining you, reflecting your glory. And Father, would you continue to do that, continue to keep them close to you, and continue to move through them, Father, on screen and off, and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. So oh, absolutely. I am wanting to implore each and every person who is here watching this, if you are a pastor especially, or if you are a leader in the church, please encourage your congregation to get out and watch this movie. You have to get out and watch and support Christian films that are out there. It, what, even if it's not in the theaters, if you can support it by watching it in a streamlined service, it is so vital for the messages of Christ-filled um, films that are out there. Um, it is so important for you to 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 do that so i'm encouraging all of you pastors all of you leaders if you are in your churches please encourage your congregation to get out and go to the movies and support this cast and crew amen she said it <laughs>